G'day guys, welcome to my extreme budget grocery haul and meals for the week. There's four in our family. I'm gonna be doing breakfast, lunch and dinner for seven days. So that's 84 meals. So I'm at Aldi. I figure that'll be the cheapest, so let's do it. Okay, so this includes just meals, not snacks for the day. So starting off, I want to have some fruit for brekkie. So pears are $1.99 a kilo, whereas if I have a look here, pink gala apples, which was the cheapest apple I could find, was $2.99. So I'm going to go with the pears. I'm going to go for seven, one each day. Bit of a disclaimer, my goal for this week is to do a cheap week. It is not to do a super healthy, balanced week. But having said that, pears are a great source of fiber. So onto some brown onions. They're great to fill up the meals. So it's $1.99 a kilo if I actually buy the packet of onions, but I don't need a hot one kilo's worth of onions. So I am going to buy more per kilo, $2.49, but I only want two onions. My goal with this week is to get under $50. I know in America they do a lot cheaper, but food's more expensive here in Australia. So my goal is to get under $50 and I'll be totally stoked if it's under $40. In our family, we need chicken. So I can't do a vegetarian week. It's just not going to work for us. I was trying to find the cheapest chicken, but at the same time I was thinking, well, drumsticks are a good price. If I can get two kilos worth of drumsticks, then it's going to be more user friendly for me. This was the chicken I was thinking about, which was $3.00. 49 for a kilo each chook is about 1.5 kilos but there's the wings in there and it's a bit extra work whereas I know if I get the drumsticks yes I've got the bone but most of the meat is very usable so it's going to work for our meals a lot of the lunches are going to consist of cheese on bread cheese on toast melted cheese on toast I feel like cheese on toast I can create some variety for everyone and I know they'll really like it but that cheese is taking a lot out of my budget at $7.79 it's even more than the chicken drumsticks that was $6.99. And then I'm going to buy some milk. I thought with the milk, we'd have it on our breakfast. And then I thought I could do scrambled eggs as well. But I got three liters. I probably could have got away with two liters. So then onto the oats. Quick oats are $1.35 for 750 grams. And rolled oats are the exact same price for 750 grams. So in our family, we're happy with rolled oats. So that's what I'm going to go with. So then on to rice, which is another inexpensive carb. So I was really hoping for a kilo of the cheap rice, but they didn't have it. So I had to go with two kilos at $2.79. And I don't expect to use all that rice. I'm planning on doing some fried rice and then some rice instead of using potatoes as part of a meal. My kids absolutely love pasta. So I'll definitely be doing a meal of pasta. And I was pretty stoked. Instead of 89 cents, it was 79 cents. And it was for the spirals or the penne or the plain spaghetti. They were all that price. Then I went searching for some tuna because I'm planning on doing fried rice and I'd normally use bacon, but bacon is too expensive. So I'm just looking for the best tuna I can get. The one I went with had 425 grams for $2.69. Next, I was looking at some pasta sauce. So this was $1.49 for 700 mils. And I also had a bit of a look at the basil pesto. It was $1.89, but we've just had a pesto pasta and we normally have it with cream. So I'm just going to leave that and go with the passata at $1.49. And then I needed some flour and I'm not sure why I went for the one kilo. It was 99 cents for a kilo, but I really should have gone for two kilos because I'm making so much bread this week. And eggs are $3.49. I've gone the 700 grams over the 600 gram and they're the caged eggs because they're the most inexpensive and then to finish off it's these veggies if you watch my what's for dinner videos you know we absolutely love the dollar 59 veggies there's such a great variety too and i'm going to go out the checkout and i am absolutely stoked cost 38 dollars and 92 cents unfortunately i couldn't get the yeast i did ask a lady but they just don't stock it at Aldi. so i'm really happy with this and to have some change from 50 dollars is awesome and like i said i got it under 40 dollars which was just my massive goal. So after I bring the groceries in, I just like to wash the fruit straight away before it goes in the fridge so that we can just grab it out each time and don't have to wash it before we have breakfast every single day. I paid with a $50 note and the added bonus of that is that I actually saved myself two cents. So that's a bonus for paying in cash and I didn't have any other fees that I get when I use my card. For breakfast, we're gonna be having oats, milk, and the pear. Like I said, I've got those massive pears so we can have a pear a day. So we're having a bit of a fruit with our oats 
and milk. You could do this as overnight oats or you could use quick oats. We're just using rolled oats and we're putting in half a cup each and then some milk and then chopping up the pear and sharing that between. These pears were massive so we didn't end up putting all of it into the bowls over the breakfast. We just ate some as well. So a way to save money throughout this week, I'm going to be making bread and I have done it before and the recipe comes from Christine from Frugal Fit Mum. And what I like about it is it only requires half a teaspoon of yeast. And as you heard, unfortunately, I couldn't get yeast at Aldi. So this is one I already had in the pantry. Um, I think I got it from Woolies. It's a lot more expensive, but I only use half a teaspoon. Even on the packet, it talks about using two teaspoons per 500 grams of flour, but I'm gonna be using half a teaspoon with three cups of flour and it turns out really well. And the other two ingredients I need is a teaspoon of salt and one and a half cups of warm water. And so day one, I'm actually gonna be using my mix master and mixing it all together with the kneading tool that comes with it. But I've also done it where I've just mixed it together with a wooden spoon. And to be honest, I couldn't tell the difference. They both turned out fantastic. So I'm just gonna mix it together. It's best to do it the night before, but day one, I'm not that organized. So I'm gonna be doing it this morning and then we'll have it for dinner instead of having bread for lunch, cheese on bread, which is gonna be a regular this week. We're just gonna have it for dinner. Once it's all combined and mixed together, it needs to rest for a minimum of eight hours up to about 24 hours. And I'm just putting some cling wrap on the top. So we'll just do that. And then once that's done, you get it out, you take it out of the bowl, try and create a ball, it flops on the bench, and then you let it sit there for half an hour. Now our oven is so slow that I turn the oven on at that stage and it's as hot as it can go. Um, ideally it would be 230 degrees Celsius, which is 450 degrees Fahrenheit, but my oven doesn't go that hot. So we just go 220. And when you're heating up the oven, you're also heating up the container. So this casserole dish I'm putting in as well, and it will heat up. Really important that this is hot as well. So then after the half an hour, I'm gonna put the bread in and put the lid on and put it back in the oven. I'm gonna let it bake for 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna remove the lid for the last 15 minutes. And as you can see here, how it just crisps up from the 30 minutes and then removing the lid till it's finally done. And there we have it, delicious, crispy bread. So I'm gonna be doing this regularly throughout the week. Okay, so we've got the drumsticks, two kilos worth, little bit of oil, salt and pepper. Now, I could just use salt and pepper, but I do have curry powder. So I reckon I'm gonna add a little bit of that and just coat this. And then I'm gonna put it in the oven. I'm gonna do it on a tray. It'll probably get crispier without this, but I just want an easier cleanup. The oven's on 200. So I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of pepper and I'm actually measuring it because I wanna make sure I do enough and a teaspoon of salt and then a bit over a teaspoon of curry powder and then roughly two tablespoons of oil and then I'm gonna mix that all together. You'll see it probably does about one kilo and then I need to repeat it again to do the next kilo worth of chicken. Because this is the only thing I'm using to flavor the chicken, I have been very generous with those spices and made sure there's a good amount there because this is what we're eating for three meals. So I want the chicken to have some flavor. Then I had to redo it again, like I said, for the last kilo worth of chicken. And then I spread it out on the tray. And like I said, I'm using the baking tray, but because there's oil, there still was a fair bit of oil on the tray afterwards. And then putting that in the oven for 30 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius, I check it at the 30 minute mark and make sure the juices are clear. And then we're gonna have this with veggies and rice. So the veggies, I did a cup, but I should have done a cup and a half. And for the rest of the week, I did a cup and a half. And then a cup of rice to two cups of boiling water into the microwave for 12 minutes, uncovered, then take it out for the last 10 minutes and cover it. And then there's nice fluffy rice. And so there we have it, rice, veggies, and chicken. And you see what I mean about we needed a bit more veggies. <laughs> So we've got this left over, we need three meals. So we've got four that aren't accounted for. One I'm gonna put in the freezer because we can't have the same meal three days in a week. The kids wouldn't be happy with that. So later in the week we'll have this and tomorrow night we'll have this. This is us having it the next day. And as you can tell, I did a lot more veggies. Dave had two drumsticks each time. So to create a bit of a variety in our day, I would just change the time of day we had it. So one day we had toast for breakfast with cheese. And then for lunch, we had the oats. So it worked out well. So on day three and four, I whipped up a pasta. So we're gonna be having pasta 
but I'm going to be doing two types. So tonight we're just going to have pasta, veggies, onion, passata sauce with cheese on top. And then for tomorrow night, which I'm going to do today, I'm going to turn it into a pasta bake. So same kind of stuff mixed together, ton of cheese on the top, and then chuck it in the oven for a little bit until the top's melted. It's the same dish, just in a different style, so it'll feel like we're eating something different. Just dump the whole packet in, I'm gonna cook it all up like I said, and then I'll divvy up the meals at the end. So basically, chopped up the onion, put the onion in, I'm using oil, as I figure everyone's got oil in their pantry, and then I put in the pasta sauce, cook the pasta, put the veggies in, put cheese on top, and we had that two nights in a row. I wanted to create some variety here, so one day I put it in a casserole dish to do a pasta bake and put a ton of cheese on the top. And then the other meal I did pasta, pasta sauce and cheese. So it just created some variety even though it was the exact same meal. Grilled it until the cheese was melted. For brekkie we had eggs on toast and yep, the kids had sauce. I didn't though, I just had the eggs on toast. And Dave and I had the oats and pear for lunch that day. And then for dinner we had the pasta. And then we really enjoyed the hard boiled eggs. So we had that again for brekkie the next day, this time with cheese, bread and eggs. And then we had leftover pasta for lunch. And then to finish off the week, day five and day seven, our dinner meal was fried rice. So I cooked the eggs, chopped up the onion, and I used tuna here instead, added in the veggies, added in the rice, mixed it all together. And then we had a bit of soy sauce when we we're at the table with it. Wow, guys, what a week. One of the best ways to save money, I think, is to eat the same meals again and again. It also saves time too, which is awesome. By having the drumsticks on day one, two, and six, it meant that I didn't have to cook from scratch each day. So that worked really well. Having pasta, kids love pasta. So pasta, sauce, cheese, and I managed to put veggies in to that dish as well. As you can see, we had veggies every single day. Like I said, this didn't include our snacks. So snacks, we always have fruit in the morning for morning tea, a fruit or a veggie, whatever we've got in the fridge, that is our snacks. And then the afternoon's a bit of a lucky dip with what we've got going on. If you are struggling with getting food, then please do seek out help. There's food bank, there would be charity organizations within your suburb, within your town that could help you out. So please seek some help if that's the situation you're in. So I'm already thinking about doing another one of these. Next time I'm gonna focus a bit more on potatoes because I think there's a lot of meals I can do with potatoes. Alrighty, thanks heaps for watching guys. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Bye.